Hi, welcome to this video on how to model bolt pretension. The goal of this analysis is to determine the speed and accuracy of two different bolt modeling methods. The first is to model 3D simplified bolt geometry, and the second is to model the bolt using a single element beam created using mechanical. I will be using the Leap blog on bolt pretension as a reference, and the link will be in the description. For method one, we will use the entire geometry. This contains six bodies, a top flange, a bottom flange, and a gasket, with the bolt assembly. The bolt assembly contains three different bodies, the bolt head, the shank, and the nut. The material used for all the bodies was structural steel. An unstructured mesh was generated on the part, with a 2mm sizing on the bolt, and a 1mm contact sizing between the bolt head and the nut, with the top and bottom flange. The contacts between the shank and the bolt holes were considered frictionless, so sliding was allowed and they could come in and out of contact, while the contacts between the flanges and the bolt heads and the gasket were considered to be rough, so the contacts could separate but could not slide. A pretension of 7000 newtons was applied to the cylindrical face of the shank, and a pressure load of 7 MPa was applied to the back of the flanges and the gasket. I'll now demonstrate how to set up the case in Mechanical. Okay, now that we've jumped into Mechanical, let's have a quick look at the part. Uh, under Geometry, we can see that we have an upper flange, a lower flange, and a gasket. And we also have the bolt assembly. And this is made up of a shank, the bolt head, and the nut. Under materials, we're only using structural steel. And under mesh, um, I've applied a body sizing to the bolt assembly and a contact sizing between the bolt head and the flange. The contacts are a frictionless uh, contact between the bolt and the bolt hole. Uh, a rough contact between the bolt head and the nut and the flange, and a rough contact between the the flange and the gasket. The reason that the, these contacts are rough are so that they can separate in the normal direction, but they can't slide tangentially. This represents the physics a little bit better than if it was simply just a bonded contact, because we do see some separation. Okay, let's set up some of the boundary conditions. So if we go static structural, uh, let's insert a frictionless support and let's set the frictionless support on the rotational symmetry. So as we can probably see, this is a segment of a fully rotated part. So let's apply on this side, uh, three faces are selected. Let's do frictionless support and let's do the other side. And let's do a frictionless support on the bottom. This is just to stop the system from moving uh, up and down in the y direction. Okay, now let's go over to analysis settings. Uh, let's set the number of steps to be three. Um, I'll explain this a little bit later. And let's change uh, the deflection to be a large deflection. So we're solving a nonlinear geometry system. And the contacts are nonlinear as well, given we have rough contacts and frictionless contacts. All right, let's insert a bolt pretension. So if we go insert bolt pretension, let's select the um, the face of the shank. And this will automatically apply a direction to apply the bolt pretension force. So as we can see that it's uh, set up the bolt pretension correctly. So let's preload the bolt with 7000 newtons. And here we want to change when the, the uh, pretension is locked and loaded. So to load the pretension, let's set step 1. And that applies the pretension. So if we go to step 2 and we select lock. This means that the f that the position of the bolt is fixed, and this will be in our settling step. So if we go lock again, 
for the third step. This locks it in for the third step as well. So this means that the the distance that the bolt has been squished does not move, but the reaction forces can change. And step two is for a settling step, and I'll explain that a little bit later. Let's now apply a pressure to the rear faces here. Let's pretend it's a hydrostatic pressure, and let's give it maybe uh, 7 MPa. Let's apply a 7 MPa pressure on load step 3. Okay, we should be good to solve the system. Alright, we've now solved the system. If we have a look here, we can see our different uh, load steps. So in this region here, before the first load step, we have load, st uh, load step converged. We have our first load step. So this is the pretension applied to the bolt. And here we can see uh, in between the two blue lines here, we have our settling step. And the goal of the settling step is to improve the accuracy of the previous step. Essentially, we bring our convergence even lower so that when we apply the load step of, uh, of step three, we don't see as big of a jump up as we would if we didn't do the settling step. Uh, the settling step aims to improve convergence, uh, makes it a little bit faster. Okay, now let's post-process the results. So if we go solution, insert deformation total, let's have a look at what the, the total deformation of the system is. Uh, let's change it to auto scale. So here in the graph, we can see our uh, three distinct steps. Okay, so here we can see bolt pretension, and then we can see the load being applied. All right, let's view the stresses. So let's have a look at the stress on the top gasket, of the top flange. So let's say we just want to view this. Let's view the equivalent stress. We can see that we have a very high stress region at the top of the bolt head, and we have a very low stress region at the back of the bolt head. You can also see that we have a high pr high stress uh, induced when we apply the the hydrostatic pressure to the back. Let's now have a look at the uh, stress within the bolt. Okay, we can see that there's a really high stress in the interface between the bolt head and the nut. You can also see that there's a bit of stress formed at the back of the nut, at the back of the bolt, sorry, where it comes into contact, when it comes into heavy contact with the back of the bolt hole. Okay, now let's insert a contact tool and have a look at what our connections are doing. Alright, let's look at all the contacts. So let's have a look at the status, and let's have a look at the pressure. Okay. So the contact status of the gasket uh, with the two flanges is that most of it is out of contact, so we see the near, and only the edge of it here is actually in contact, so we see the sticking. If we have a look at the shank as well, we can see that most of it is out of contact with the hole. The only parts that really come into contact at the back of it here. And if we have a look at the bolt, the bolt head and the nut, we can see that most of the nut is actually in contact, except for the back region here, which is out of contact. And if we have a look at the pressure now, see that there's a massive pressure in contact with the nut and the bolt head. And we can see that there's a decent pressure formed with the gasket 
So if we go back to the contact tool, we can select what we actually want to see. So if we turn off the shank, and if we turn off the head and the nut, we only want to view the gasket contacts. So now we can have a look at the pressure on the gasket. And now finally, let's have a look at the bolt pretension. So the bolt pretension tells us how much the bolt itself has been displaced inwards and what the force is to displace it. So here we can see that the bolt pretension has been adjusted or essentially it has been squished in uh, for e to the minus two millimeters to start and then it's locked so it doesn't move for the rest of the simulation. And then after load step two, it has the approximately 7,000 newtons applied to it. But then after load step three, there's a relieving effect because the, the flange is being moved inwards. So it actually is less force being applied on it. We can see that here as our bolt pretension load has actually decreased. Okay, now let's recap what we've covered. Large deflection was enabled in the model. We applied three different load steps to the model, apply the pretension, settle the pretension to speed up the solve, and apply the external loads. The force convergence graph is shown here, and it shows the residual for the number of iterations, and how many iterations it takes to converge a load step. The time taken to solve was 155 seconds. The two deformation contours shown here is the deformation after steps 2 and 3 with 20 times the scaling. The equivalent stress is shown here for both the upper flange and the bolt. Note that the stress on the flange is 3 times less than the stress on the bolt. The contact pressure for both the bolt and the gasket is shown. The max contact pressure on the bolt is just under 3 times the pressure acting on the gasket. Note, the bolt and the gasket both have regions where the contact is separated, shown by a zero contact pressure. And this is demonstrated by using the status tool, where the near status proves that some regions are not in contact. And finally for case one, these are the results of the bolt pretension. As we can see from the table, we have steps one to three, the adjustment reaction is the deformation caused by the pretension, and the working load is the force applied to the bolt. And as we can see in step three, as we apply the external load, the force keeping the bolt pretensioned decreases. Now let's begin using method two. This method used the same geometry as part one, but removed the physical bolt and replaced it with a beam model. The beam ends are scoped to the imprints of the bolt head and the nut onto the flanges. The bolt has an 8mm radius and is a body-body contact. The mesh was kept similar to case 1, where a sphere of influence on the surfaces of the contact copied the contact sizing. The remaining gasket contacts were kept as rough. The loading and boundary conditions were the same as case 1. I'll now demonstrate how to set up case 2 in mechanical. Okay, now for this example, we're going to model the bolt as a beam. So if we go to connections, insert beam, we can set the radius to be eight millimeters and this will match the inner radius of the hole. And we want to scope the bolt to the imprint regions. So if we go scope, select here. So this applies the bolt to this face. Now we want to scroll down and scope it to the uh, opposite imprint region. And now this fits the bolt through these re two regions here. And we want to make the behavior deformable. Okay, so everything in this model is the same as the first example, except we've removed the bolt. So if we go to contacts, we can see that the flange contacts uh, exactly the same. And the mesh has had the face sizings applied with a sphere of influence to match how the contact sizing was applied in the previous example. 
So if we go to analysis settings, set the number of steps to three, let's enable large deflection, and let's set up the boundary conditions. These will be the same as previous. Okay, now that our boundary conditions are set up, let's set up the bolt pretension. To do this, we want to grab the circular beam created and then drag it into static structural. This creates us a bolt pretension. So we're going to preload it to 7,000 newtons again. And we want to lock steps two and three. Okay, we can now solve the simulation. Okay, same as before, let's have a look at the force convergence. Here we can see step one with the bolt pretension, and we can see the settling step, and then we can see the final load step. Again, the settling step brings down the convergence so that when we apply the the load, it doesn't jump up as much, and it's a little bit quicker to solve. Okay, now let's insert a deformation plot. Same as before, we can see our distinct steps. Now let's have a look at the stress. We want to view the stress only on the top flange. Okay, now we want to view the contact status. So if we go insert contact tool, same as before, we only have the two gasket contacts. And let's insert a pressure. Here we can see the contact status that so looks similar to what happened before. And if we go to pressure, we can see the contact pressure acting on the gasket. And now we want to see the bolt pretension. So if we drag bolt pretension into solution, evaluate, we can see the same behavior as before. At load step two, the bolt pretension increases. And then when we apply the load, the bolt pretension force decreases. Okay, now let's recap the results from case two. Case two took less iterations to converge and much less time as shown from the force convergence plot. This is most likely due to a reduction in the number of elements and the removal of the four non-linear contacts around the bolt. The displacement contour shapes look similar to that of case one. However, the magnitudes are higher for both the pretension step and the external loading step. The stress contours around the bolt hole are different to case one. Most notably, the high stress concentration around the back of the bolt hole. This is caused by the beam being bonded to the imprint unlike case one where the bolt could come out of contact. We can see that both contact pressure and status look similar to that of case one. And finally, we can see that the working load starts off at 7,000 newtons as applied, and like case one, decreases when the external loading is applied. Now let's compare the results for both models. The time taken to run the beam model over the geometry was significantly less almost a 90% reduction in solve time. The memory required to solve was halved because the number of elements required was decreased. The maximum stress in the upper flange was 5.6% higher when using the beam model. And the maximum deformation on the upper flange was 12% higher when using the beam model. And the gasket pressure was 6.1% higher when using the beam model. So the beam model gives a more conservative prediction of the stress and deformation in the model. Comparing the pretension results for case 1 and case 2, there is a very small difference between the set pretension and the pretension within the 3D bolt. On the external loading step, the pretension was 1.4% higher in the 3D model case. And the adjustment of the beam was almost twice as large as the adjustment of the 3D bolt model. Some of the pros and cons for each method. The pretension load cannot change direction, 
so the systems that rotate out of plane cannot use pretension. Method 1 is most accurate as it explicitly models the bolt. It could be made more accurate by using the artificial thread tool to model the stresses in the nut and bolt interface or model the threads explicitly. Method 2 is quicker and uses less RAM to solve as there are fewer contacts and fewer elements to resolve. Thank you for watching this video on how to do bolt pretension.